Good morning and welcome to the Public County Board of Commissioners May 10, 2016 work session. We'll welcome all of our invited guests and elected officials. Uh, any elected officials in the room? Yeah, oh, our high sheriff, Gary Goldish. Great to have you here, Sheriff. Uh, any others on this? Remind you to uh, uh, take your next tells and silence them and uh, pagers and uh, any other devices. Uh, Marshall. Our invocation and pledge will be brought to us this morning by Tommy Leonard, chaplain for the Pauling County Public Safety Appreciation. Would you stand with me if you're able? Let's pray. <coughs> Father God Almighty, we humbly bow before your throne of grace with thankful hearts. You are worthy of our praise, Lord. You are the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. We thank you for loving us, and we want to give you all the honor and praise that you deserve. And we're thankful that your love endures forever. Father, we pray for our nation, state, and local leaders, asking that, you would, that they would seek wise counsel from you as they make the decisions that affect each of our lives. And God, we lift up Paulding County to you, asking that you would continue to bless our county in a mighty way with proper growth and prosperity, if it be your will. And God, your word says in 2 Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14, if my people, who are called by my name, will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and heal their land. Father, we need that healing. And God, I pray for the people that are seeking office during this election. I pray that you will fill these positions with godly men and women that will serve our citizens in a way that would bring honor and glory to you, Father. And Lord, we lift up our military and first responders as they serve and protect us. Bless and protect them, Lord. Again, we thank you for this day. We ask you to forgive us of our sins. And we pray this in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, minutes and April 26, 2016 board meeting minutes are available for your review. Uh, I'd like to make an announcement uh, that the uh, May 24th Board of Commissioners meeting will be postponed until May the 26th, so that moves from a Tuesday to a Thursday. Uh, Mr. Powell now had requested that. That's election day, and it's uh, also a hearing over in court, so we'll be moving uh, from the 24th to the 26th. Mr. Chairman, is um, the planning commission meeting still going to be on Tuesday? Yes, sir. Yes. I'd also like to make an announcement. Uh, the groundbreaking ceremony will be at Union Park uh, on this Thursday, May the 12th at 2 o'clock. So, uh, if you would, uh, you'd like to be present for that.
chairman of the commission in Cobb County. Uh, he has the Strand Theater named after him. He's a great leader. I served with him on the Cobb area water board. His wife, Rachel, uh, passed away over the weekend, and that service is remained steep also. Uh, so just some, some, some sad news from uh, some of our leaders. But uh, uh, Jim was such an easy soul and an easy person uh, to talk to. And uh, most of you know that he, he fell from a uh, utility pole um, and then uh, as an invalid in a wheelchair uh, went on to uh, be our tax commissioner and uh, did a fabulous job and, uh, you know, battled with that, but did it all uh, with a smile. So uh, Jim will be, will be missed. Chairman, what, what, what location? Clark. 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 Uh, the Board of Commissioners would like to present the Foster Parent Appreciation Proclamation to Shelley Martin, President of the Foster Parents Association. If you'll come forward. And anybody that you uh, want to have uh, with you. to assist with the child's safe return to their parents' care. Foster parents can help children heal from painful wounds of abuse and neglect and prepare them for a healthy future and keep children safe while building strong families. And whereas more than 112 children are in out-of-home care in April 2016, this placement is the last option considered with reasonable efforts to protect a child in their own home have been exhausted. Pauline County benefits from the selfless dedication and daily service provided by foster parents. Their contributions to our youth are incalculable and irreplaceable. And whereas this month, especially we express our gratitude and respect to the many Pauline County foster parents, family members, volunteers, and mentors, child welfare professionals, and other community members throughout the state who make such a meaningful difference in the lives of children and youth in foster care. Now, therefore, be it resolved that I, David A. Austin, Chairman of the Paulin County Board of Commissioners, do hereby proclaim May 2016 as Foster Parent Appreciation Month in Paulin County and encourage all Paulin County to recognize the achievements of foster parents in their communities. Will you all stand with me?
Helding County Foster Parent and Adoptive Parent Association really supports or is thankful for the community support and we look forward to working with everyone more um, with helping the children of our, of our county. So thank you very much. with Information Technology Director uh, speaking regard, regarding the Rockstar Camp 2016 calling camp for science, technology, and robotics. While Will was getting ready, uh, he's been recognized nationally uh, for uh, innovativeness uh, in the IT industry. Uh, he never brags on himself. I have to hear this from Teresa, uh, who couldn't be prouder, but uh, he's uh, recognized uh, on the national, maybe international scale. Uh, yes, sir. Thank you. Uh, Teresa is my biggest cheerleader. Uh, and she's your only chair. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Government Management Information System is an international uh, committee, and the uh, committee, the selection committee, chose me for the special year based on some of the projects and ideas that I've implemented throughout this year. So, not only is it, you know, simply an honor to be nominated in that group with, you know, your Fulton Counties, your Cobbs, your, you know, uh, Savannahs, and all those. Um, certainly, it is humbling to be selected for that. Thank you. Um, I wanted to um, bring to your attention the Rockstar Camp that is going on this summer. This camp was actually visualized a couple years ago, but the difficulty in putting it together is all the uh, pieces and moving parts that are needed to really make it happen. Uh, being in the IT world, there are things that I just don't know about running camps, um, teaching students, um, dealing with parents, and everything else that goes into uh, things that you know, the school system and Parks and Rec and the libraries know. So um, it took us about a year to pull these teams together. Once we did, we, we came up with a solution that really seemed to click, really seemed to work. And um, you know, the, the cohesiveness and all these people working together really produced a great project. So instead of telling you, hey, we're going to have a computer camp and everybody you know, um, claps and goes on their way, I thought I'd do a short presentation and uh, I'll let you guys know really why we're doing it and what it's about. So the name of the camp is Rockstar Camp. We came up with that because uh, it's supposed to be fun. We're going to rock science, technology, and robotics. So that's where your star comes from on the end of it. When we look at this, it's actually a STEM project, meaning science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. <coughs> and there are going to be several jobs that come about in the state of Georgia close to 22,000 jobs are going to become available in this industry or in this area within the next current decade. Um, currently, there are more jobs available in STEM occupation than there are candidates to work on. So there's many jobs available and certainly um, well-paying jobs for the students coming out and joining the workforce or going to college to prepare themselves. Uh, when we look at you know, half-fall STEM jobs, they don't require a four-year degree, and I'm certainly not advocating you don't go to college or anybody doesn't go to college, but what I am advocating is just like a football team couldn't have quarterbacks in every position, we need somebody to fill all the workforce positions that are available for people. So these jobs start off on average $53,000 a year, which is 10% higher than similar education requirements. So these are good paying jobs um, that uh, you know, certainly our students can go after. Um, the technology camp itself is one of a kind. It's a basic introduction to technology. It's going to provide some skills and some knowledge to the students or participants. It's going to be interactive and it's going to be fun. You know, when you think of coding, you're sitting there in front of a machine all day, not getting up, not moving, eyes burning. That wasn't fun. So uh, we took the ideas, parks and rec, teachers and libraries, and we've implemented some other activities to go along with this. Um, 
No one else is doing this Spalding. I think the closest um, school doing this right now is Kennesaw State College. So if you want to um, take this kind of activity for your children, um, you're going to have to leave the county. So we thought this was a great opportunity to do something inside our county. Um, it's important that kids gain an early interest and enthusiasm in science and technology. Again, the earlier they get started, the more interest they have the better chances they have to compete in these jobs. And of course, we've already mentioned the pay as well. Um, the camp is going to introduce them to new skills. We're going to introduce them to people who work in, in the field. You know, there, there are several jobs, and we talk about some of the products that the kids are going to be able to use and interact with. You not only have your programmers, you have your hardware designers, you have your technical writers, you have your troubleshooting team. So there's many different layers involved and there's opportunities for just about everyone. And this will also prepare for high school. Right now, when the students are in high school, they're having to start from the basis, basic ground level, to get them prepared to get through the course. What we're hoping to do is introduce them to these skills a little bit earlier so we can take them into the high school, prepared at a certain level, and then we can go beyond what's currently being able to be taught in the time giving. Um, so what are we going to do, and how's it going to be fun? Let's see. First off, we're going to start with Scratch, which is a uh, programming um, uh, game where the uh, participants will be able to program their own interactive games. They'll control the movement of the characters, the type of character, and the points to achieve, and so forth and so on. So I haven't used this myself. I just know the basics of it. So. Uh, Hopefully, I'll be one of the participants as well. Um, secondly, we're going to use Notepad programming to um, program web pages. Right now, there's a lot of programs out there that allow you to build web pages that are nice and friendly, easy to use. But as far as knowing what's going on in the back end, most people don't know that. So what we're trying to do is just introduce them to that language so that they understand it at a deeper level. We're going to play around with BB-8. Um, this is a little device from Star Wars, uh, controlled by a smartphone, so they'll have an opportunity to interact with that in the afternoons. We'll play around with the um, cubits, which are devices that you simply stick together um, in the hopes of obtaining an end result. So you can make a flashlight by uh, sticking a few of these devices together. Some of the blocks will have power source. Some of them will have light bulbs. So depending on what you put together is what you create. Um, there's a hundred different ways to do it, maybe even a thousand. So we'll leave it up to the students uh, what they want to do and how they want to do it. We'll play around with a drone um, so they can have the opportunity to play with one of those, um, learn the basics of flight, and um, you know, uh, indoors with these units will be a little tricky. However, um, I'm sure we'll make it work some way. We'll build some robots with uh, Lego Mindstorms. Um, basically, what's going to happen is put Legos together, put an intelligent block on it, and make it walk, move, whatever, again, whatever they want to do. We'll play around with little bits, electronic circuit board, which um, snaps together. They'll understand how circuitry runs through a system, and the end result is typically turning on a light, uh, making a propeller fly off, um, several different options for the end result of what's being built. We'll play around with Makey Makey. Makey Makey is a basically a game for music. So you can take any type of fruit, any su uh, subject that has a water-based material in it, a liquid type of uh, material, and then it'll make sound waves through the computer, which will allow the music to play. So we'll play around with that. Um, I'm not sure what type of uh, fruit we're going to bring or what we're going to bring. <laughs> we'll figure it out. Uh, we'll play around with the uh, robotic vehicles. Um, these vehicles are actually controlled by your smart devices as well. We'll put on some races during the afternoon, some heats. And um, again, what I was talking about earlier, there's plenty of opportunities in the field of STEM, from your engineers who are designing the circuits designing the hardware, to designing the software to be using, and to design the uh, technical resources to teach individuals how to use it with the written manuals. 
We'll play around with the Autobots. Um, basically, the little devices are programmed to follow the lines on paper. Each color will be programmed into the Autobot, which will dictate what that device does. So, if you, for instance, if you hit a green color, it may go faster. If you hit a red color, it may start doing circles. So, again, whatever you want to do, you're going to pick out that color and program the device. We'll play around with snap circuits. Again, it's another illustration of how circuits will run electricity through a circuit. Um, at the end result, you can have doorbells, voice recorders, or alarms trigger if you've got the circuitry set up right. We'll play around with the squishy circuits, uh, which are devices made out of Play-Doh, pretty much. Um, Electricity doesn't just travel through metal objects, so we're going to kind of introduce these type of uh, squishy elements to them. As you see, you know, we've got uh, some eyeballs lighting up on the frog, or some headlights riding up, lighting up on the cars. So, again, it's left to the imagination of the dreamer to come up with the idea. Uh, the camp details. Um, we are going to start June 13th, which is a Monday morning at 8:30. Camp will run until 1 o'clock every day. We'll run Monday through Friday. Friday will actually be Parents' Day. Um, we'll, we'll invite the parents in. We'll allow them to see what each participant has created. And we're going to allow the kids to take home the software that we use. It's free software, so there's no cost to the parents to buy the software. And the children or the participants will also be able to take home their programs that they created and an opportunity to advance them um, and keep building and keep dreaming. Um, the ages we selected is 9 13 years of age. Location will be at Hiram High School, and the cost for the camp is $150. Um, this pays for the instructors, the snacks, um, any money that is left over is going to be donated to the host school, which is Hiram High School, and their computer lab. You can register at recreation.pawn.gov. As I mentioned before, there are several different elements of putting this together. Um, certainly, I could not have done it myself. Um, I want to thank the Board of Commissioners for giving us the opportunity and recognizing the importance of technology and what it does to our community. Board of Education for recognizing you know, the importance of the workforce ready programs and things for their students and allowing us to use their facilities. Hiram High School staff and students, this is kind of a unique uh, element uh, which was very creative. The students of the graphic um, graphic design department actually designed the logo that we saw on the front page. There was a competition in, um, introduced to the students, and whoever wanted to uh, participate could submit their design. So we picked the one that we liked the best. There were a couple commercials made, same thing. Um, it was introduced to the drama club. The drama club was able to produce commercials for this camp, and those commercials were actually being shown on Channel 23 at this time. So these skills from the students were actually used in a tangible resource where they could kind of brag a little bit. They could be seen on TV, they could be seen in the newspaper and say, I did that. I um, want to thank the uh, IT department, of course, you know, my guys who work for me. Um, I, I couldn't spend the time you know, doing some of this without their knowledge and skills and dedication. Baltimore County Libraries, they are actually uh, instrumental in bringing some of this hardware to the camp uh, through the steam engine, uh, through the West Georgia Regional Library System. They were also uh, very adamant or very helpful in marketing the camp to the library system and very knowledgeable in helping me understand what parents are after and what kids are after these days. Um, Parks and Recreation, again, Parks offers a lot of program, good programs in the county. You know, my son has taken advantage of several of the sports camps that are offered in Baltimore County. They have science camps, and um, they know kids, they know parents, they know age groups. Um, they allowed us to use their online registration program for the camp, which is very important. You can't offer a technology camp and ask for paper to be handed in. It just doesn't work. Um, so, you know, their knowledge of dealing with families was very helpful to me. I could not have done it without their participation in getting this all uh, running either. Channel 23, they actually went to the school. They talked about preparing um, 
these types of commercials for the television spot that we were going to give them. Um, gave me some ideas and uh, appreciate Jody's time and taking that you know, on her shoulders to help me out. Um, Alder County Finance Department, again, when you're dealing with money, you, you have to get somebody who knows what they're doing and they have to control it properly. And uh, I can't think of any better department to handle that or better individual than this college to handle those type of uh, funds. Um, I do, I will take questions, but real quick, I'd like to play these uh, two commercials. They're about 30 seconds a piece, if you don't mind. citizens, but many are from citizens telling me how to fix the problem. Um, I promise you I'll return every single phone call and email when it, it relates to litter. Um, there is no 100% way of stopping litter, people from littering. But one of the most common questions I receive from our citizens is why are the inmates in our jail not out picking up litter? I get that call daily. The answer is that they are in fact out almost every day when they're available and the weather permits. 
the qualifications for an inmate to be a trustee eliminates many of these inmates from being able to do this. So they do have a limited pool. I think they're down to six right now at this time. But however, with the, the help that we received from the Paulding County Inmate Workforce Division under the leadership of Sergeant Keith Thomas and his outstanding staff, and I put some stats in front of you guys earlier this morning, from January 2015 through April 2016, they have put in 475 hours picking up our roadways, covering a total of 506 miles, and removed 4,694 bags of trash from the sides of our roadways. During the month of March 2016, 858 bags of litter were picked up, and April yielded 573 bags of litter. And I want to thank Sheriff Gulledge and the Paulding County Inmate Workforce for this program. You can only imagine what it would look like if we didn't have them out doing the portion that they're doing now. The Marshals Bureau, under the leadership of Major Leanne Mahone, continues to work hard to enforce the uncovered load violations. Under Georgia state law, all loads being hauled on our roads must be secured by a tarp, netting, or proper strapping to ensure that the load uh, is secure and has no way of falling off or falling out onto the roadways. And uncovered loads and garbage haulers are responsible for a large percentage of the litter and debris on our roadways. Since they started writing tickets, we've noticed that more of our citizens are using tarps and nettings, but we still have a long way to go. The remainder of the litter comes from individuals that simply just don't care. They have the mindset that it's no big deal and somebody will clean it up. And to me, there's just no excuse for litter. We talk about economic development. No company wants to locate in an area that's trashed. No company. And Keep Paul and Beautiful continues to hold events throughout the year. Through the year. We have our annual Great American Cleanup coming up. We did the bring one for the chipper. We have Electronics Recycling Day. And we've added a paper shredding day as well. And our, our board member, Nancy Hightower, she's a retired school teacher from Gwinnett County, who's a citizen here. She continues to educate our third graders. She's practically in every third grade class this year. Uh, she educates them on the effects of litter, stormwater runoff, and pollution. She taught over a thousand of our children and adults last year. Now she's finishing up today in Shelton Elementary. She's there right now. She's a wonderful lady, a great asset. But doing all these things are good, but we still need someone, we needed someone to organize and lead a program that would have an effect on our litter problem. And you as a board, and I'm thankful for this, you unanimously approved the position of litter coordinator. And I'm proud to say that I have the right person in the right place at this time, and her name is Pam Tucker. She and her husband, Joey, live in the Crossroads area, and they have two daughters that attend East Poly Middle School. When I met Pam, I knew that she had a passion for our county. You just don't normally see a person that walks away from a good job and paying job and settle in our county. How exactly was I going to plug her in? I really wasn't sure. And she was just like my wife and 80% of the other county citizens leaving the county to go to work. Well, her company was going to relocate downtown Atlanta, and as many of us, she just had enough. <laughs> <laughs> she decides to leave her job, and now she's concentrating on raising her, her family in a good, safe environment here in Paulding County. I was so blessed to get this caliber of person that she is. She jumped right into the position without hesitation, and she's been running ever since. She's reached out to our local civics groups, our churches, our colleges, businesses, high schools, and to establish relationships so that we can educate people and get them to volunteer and help us with this problem. Now this Saturday, we're gonna host our Great American Cleanup event. We're gonna meet right outside of the Veterans Park at 8.30 in the morning to do our registration. And then we're gonna disperse around nine o'clock and try to, uh, proceed throughout the county on various roads for the litter pickup itself. Now this is only one day, but we need as a community to come together and help keep all the beautiful. Litter will always continue to be a problem as long as we allow it. Catching litter bugs is a problem. I've never seen a person toss out trash in front of the deputy. Although at one time, the city of Smyrna Police Department did catch me and my best buddy on Old Concord Road circa 1979, improperly disposing of an adult beverage can. <laughs> and we were immediately cured from litter. But I, I would like to look at look in, in to see if we could possibly set up a, a, a litter hotline. A lot of our other neighboring municipalities have them. Uh, it would allow private citizens to report littering when they see it, but it would also require them, if they wanted to file a complaint, to make themselves available to go to court if it got to go that far. 
Mr. Chairman and Sheriff Gullidge, if, if there's an old man's program that would allow me to be mandated under Georgia state law, I'm certainly qualified. I've been behind people who tossed out trash in front of me, and I just wish that I had blue lights so I could light them up. I know every one of us has probably experienced that at one time. But I am so proud to be Executive Director of Keep Paul and Beautiful, the Operations Manager for our Landfill and Recycling. And we, we have a great county here, folks. We have great people who rise to the occasion, and we see it numerous times when somebody is sick or somebody needs help. This county still has that spirit of cooperation and willingness to help each other. We need to get together and help. You know, if every one of us just walked out to our driveway, we could possibly go 50 to 100 feet on each side of the road and pick it up. And I know it's not your responsibility. That you didn't cause the problem. But we all have to be part of the solution. And I know many of you do this. I've seen many of you, especially two of you commissioners, and I know in particular, I've seen you out on the side of the road as I was throwing my trash out for yard. <laughs> but I have seen you both out there doing that, and I thank you for that. It's all you. <laughs> and uh, if I could, uh, Pam Tucker, would you stand for a minute? I want to introduce you to Pam Tucker, our new leader for today. Pam is going to have to leave now to go help Nancy teach at, uh, at Shelton Elementary. But uh, I'll be available for a few minutes after, after the meeting. Please come. If you can come out and help us Saturday, we would love for you to come out. We've got some great prizes to give away. It would be a great time for us to fellowship and make an improvement in the class. Thank you, Tom. Thank you. Thank you, Tom. Thank you. Uh, we are blessed with great staff. Will and Tommy and all the others that help us here. It's just so distracting. Federal orders discuss action to approve the purchase of a soil compactor to ASC construction equipment in the amount of $95,912. Good morning. morning. DOT has a piece of equipment that they would like to surplus. It's 28 years old. They feel they've gotten their use. <laughs> useful life out of these equipment that has been compacting the soil underneath um, the roadways. So this temp, they um, approach Tim, and it's in, it is a budgeted item, it's in the general fund budget, it was budgeted at 115. Um, they approached Tim, Tim found the uh, piece of equipment on the state contract, so it was bid out originally by the state to be back in the state contract. And the amount is $95,912 from ASC construction equipment. Scott Bell, any questions? Any questions for Captain Bruce? Bruce, that was fine. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Now, with reports from committees and departments, uh, we've got a squashed question coming up on the ballot on May the 24th. Uh, Tabitha has worked hard to put uh, questions and answers together for you on this. Um, she's got department heads, uh, Scott Green with DOT, Michael Justice with Parks and Recreation, uh, Dan Munford with 911, Joy Pelford with uh, our fire department, and Gary Gullidge with our sheriff's department. And uh, I, I think you want to go through and, and talk, and then I'm going to be past speakers and speak. Well, I, I have, um gotten a few questions myself about squats over the past couple of weeks, so I'm going to answer those first. And then, rather than what we've done this year is we've uh, used Channel 23 as well to create videos to tell you <coughs> and the citizens what we've done with the funds and what we plan to do if squats is approved. So what we're going to do is just go through and uh, view those videos. They're about two and a half, three minutes a piece. And then um, all of the uh, once you mentioned are available for any questions that you have or the systems have um, that may be specific to projects. So with that, if it's okay, I'm going to answer. Sure. Okay. Um, sales tax. Halden County has 7% sales tax. Uh, this is the special purpose local option sales tax, which is in red. It is a continuation. It's not an addition. So 4% of your sales tax goes to the state. 1% is used to roll back the millage rate, and 1% is used for a special purpose, and then you have 1% that goes to education, which is your e -boss. Um, How do we use FOSS funds? They're used primarily in capital improvements. And this year we had, um, we did evaluate all projects in Baldwin County to see what we needed to include in um, our SPOS program. We 
remained with the Transportation, Public Safety, Recreation, and Economic Development. We do have other projects going on. However, if you take from one area, or if you give to one area, you have to take from another. So we, are not, we did not feel we were in a position to take from DOT or from public safety or from recreation because we're not um, to where we need to be <coughs> yet. Um, another thing I wanted to mention is a lot of times you hear, well, you know, I don't see the benefit from that dollar. Well, if you have any transportation at all, there is probably a road that contains that salt if you have driven on or ridden across that you did see the benefit. Public safety, um, I hope that most of us don't encounter an officer, but that's because of proactive approach that they, if they're doing their job. Um, I don't think Gary's ever given you a uh, month or quarterly update that said we had no calls. Um, so that's, if you haven't seen it, it's not because it's not there, it's just because you haven't been a victim of their of a crime. Recreation, we've worked to get our recreational parks available to everybody. So when you think of recreation, you think of, well, that's for kids. Well, it does keep our kids busy, and it does keep them out of trouble, and it does teach them team sports. However, over the past few years, we've added Wild Oak Park, and we've added um, Veterans Park, which has allowed for walking trails. Um, the use of those parks is tremendous. Um, they have, I guess, the healthier, more health conscious everything society is, the more interested we are in those kind of um, projects. And if we're not using them, it's our fault because they're there, they're available for all of us to use at no fee. Um, population in Poland. Poland's urban. So in 2000, the census count was 81,000. 2020 has doubled. And um, on this chart, it looks like by 2040, we possibly could have doubled again. With that um, growing population, it becomes a higher demand in service and more capital needs. We can't serve the same 280,000 with the same resources that we had at 80,000. How much does SPOS generate? Currently, SPOS generates about $14.5 million a year. And 12 and a half of that are at the 86.9 is Paulding County, and the remaining in that goes to the cities. And they have their projects in the as well. So with that, if it's okay, unless you have any questions, I'll show you how to access the information from the website. On the front page, Potter County Special Purpose Local Option Sales Tax. This information um, has been handed out, it's been emailed. And it pretty much gives you an overview of SWAS, what it does for us, and how it's going to be utilized, as well as a little bit of information and pictures of things we've done in the past. That's one area that we have information. If you go to departments, transportation, and SPOS projects, and you can pretty much see future and current SPOS projects there. With information, and here's your SPOS transportation list. Obviously, can't read it here, but or I can. <laughs> um, but that gives you an access point to be able to see that list of projects. The videos go to the video gallery, unless you go out here like you might not know that even some of the other videos are available, but we've got quite a few. Picture 
big time still in, in the future. Those are to include the local road system and as well as the state route system. Some of the major projects that we've got on the horizon include Dallas Airport Highway um, that leads from uh, New Hope up to Crossroads. Other intersections around the county that need to be addressed up on Cedar Crest Road, Daft Bridge Road, the Highway 101 corridor. Uh, what we'd like to do is improve the intersection that goes to store. Holly Springs Road at Highway 101, as well as Gold Mine Road at 101. All of our information on our future projects is on our website at www.pauline.gov and you look under departments under transportation and you can see our road plans, you can see our comprehensive transportation plan for the next 25 years. But we do things as quick as we can and as well built as we can with the dollars we're giving.
provide stations and manpower and equipment to reduce ISO ratings. Um, we are set to have two ladder trucks within this next fall, I believe, and three fire stations as well as other replacement equipment. So there's definitely needs in these areas. Um, we went through an extensive evaluation process as well for the neighborhood. Um, and if you have any other questions, all these people are available that are listed today for any questions. Because the last thing we want is for somebody to say they couldn't vote or make a decision because they didn't have any information. Good job, Tabitha. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Under new business, discuss action to accept Oak Ruth Parkway 2.62 miles in length between State Route 92, Iron Dutchville Highway, and State Route 6, Wingy Bagwell Parkway for perpetual maintenance and inclusion in the county public road system effective April 30, 2016. Uh, yes, um, this is the east side project we completed two years ago. We've got a lot of uh, closeout. Uh, activities going on with the uh, completely some interconnects with signals, punch list items with the contractor, and as this was a large federal project, a lot of paperwork to get the project actually wrapped up where we can accept it. Um, we need to ask you to accept the project so we have official date of uh, change of control where it becomes the county's responsibility, and this also lets the state proceed with acceptance of our work. Maybe we can close out those grants. Appreciate if you would approve this. Um, you may have noticed there was a little bit of uh, correction work we did recently, and as the contractor's done that in the last couple of weeks, we're ready to recommend acceptance. Thanks, John. Thank Great you. job. We're fortunate to have you at the DOT. Any questions? Thank you. Number two, discuss action to authorize chairman to enter to an actual cost preliminary engineering for the Colonial Pipeline Company and the approximate <coughs> amount of $49,920 for the engineering services for the accommodation of petroleum pipelines for the replacement bridge project on dallas Ackworth Highway over Pickens Mill Creek. Uh, funding will come from SWAST again, uh, Scott Green, DOT. As you remember from the engineering agreements we brought to you, or most of you, uh, we are working on our two oldest bridges in the Canyon, 1941 models. They're very narrow, we've had a lot of crashes, and the concrete is well beyond its design life. Uh, we are wrapping up the design of that contract and we're preparing to let it to construction. Uh, before we can do that, we have to complete all of the utility coordination so that when the work does begin, it, it, it flows as quickly as possible and coordinate with all those that we affect. And one of those is the three pipeline crossings we have that Colonial owns uh, just south of the Pickett's Mill Creek site. Uh, because we are expanding the road and widening it, we actually are getting onto their facility in a way that we have to reimburse them um, where they have a prior right. And what this is is basically the engineering agreement to get them to finalize their design for relocation or protection of the facility. Uh, we will um, get that done and then we will have to bring the agreement back to you for anything we actually have to do to protect those pipelines. That could include recasing the pipes, uh, coating them to protect them from the extra roadway fields, or in a worst case would be replacing a line. I don't think that will be necessary, but it will be fairly expensive once we bring that construction contract back to you. But it, it isn't necessary part of the project before we proceed forward. Have you got it? Glad to answer any questions. Thank you. We, we did complete the right of way acquisition on that project, so basically, this is one of the last steps. Or we can put the project out for bid. Thank you. <coughs> That's the conclusion of our regular business. Uh, we do have a technical session uh, to talk about uh, real estate. No one is on the agenda uh, to speak uh, on uh, non agenda items. Uh, so you're welcome to leave or you're welcome to stay. Uh, but do I hear a motion? We go into executive session for real estate. 
motion to go into executive session for real estate. Second. Motion second any discussion. All in favor say aye. Aye. Thank you all for being here. Yeah. Just go without burning. No action was taken uh, in executive uh, session. Do I hear a motion to adjourn? Motion to adjourn. Second. Motion to second. All in favor say aye. 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 We are adjourned. Okay.